Hey guys, this is Adam from Engineering here at Spike. This is Brian, I mean, sorry, Ryan. I kinda, you know, forgot with the, the hair and everything. But uh, we're here to talk about, uh, do another engineering download on one of our premier products, this time the Conical Fermenter line. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it being a unit tank. So, unit tank means that you can ferment and carbonate in this thing, all in the same vessel. So, you don't have to deal with, you know, bottling, uh, adding some priming sugar, waiting seven days in order for your, like, your beer to carbonate. Um, you can do it all in this tank, which is a real good benefit. And it has this nice cone bottom that allows you to collect and repitch yeast. That, you know, yeast is probably yep. one of the most expensive things in a batch of beer and can save you money down the road. Yep, let all that stuff settle down. And, you know, honestly, having to jump from uh, if you use plastic carboys or gla uh, plastic buckets or glass carboys, and you got to jump from those to the bottle. And, you know, you can do pretty much everything in this vessel from start to finish. And, you know, and honestly, it saves you time and space. Yeah, and speaking of glass carboys and plastic buckets, let's get into the material of this thing. Yeah, so obviously you can see this is, uh, you know, kind of mirror polished stainless Ooh, steel. Look at that. Um, you know, 304 stainless steel, it's just an industry standard. And again, we've kind of learned over the years, you go with what the industry has used and learned from, and this is no different here. So 304 stainless, it's tried and true, it looks good, it doesn't harbor bacteria, it doesn't scratch easily. Um, you know, you can clean it so easily by just kind of wiping it down. That's why we got that mirror, mirror polish on it. Um, you know, and it pretty much is going to last a lifetime. You know, your first batch and your hundredth batch, the vessel's going to look the same. You really can't say the same for uh, anything glass, which obviously can break. Uh, plastic can get all nasty and scratches and start harboring bacteria very easily. So, you know, you're going to end up buying those vessels over and over again, whereas this thing, you pretty much buy once, cry once. Yeah, and that's why we say your liver's going to fail before your equipment does. Exactly. So let's talk about the fittings. Um, as you can see, we got a bunch of holes in the front of it here. Obviously those are for different uh, functions, but you know, what kind of fitting do we use? We use a one and a half inch tri-clamp pretty much across the board. Um, you know, we weld these in our facility. Um, right here in Milwaukee. Right here, sanitary welding, TIG practices, uh, very high level of craftsmanship. You know, you can look at these welds and you know, show them off to your friends. They clean up like, you know, perfectly. Um, this is pretty much a tried and true method, and again, from you know, the commercial brewing industry. We don't mess around with punching holes and using weldless fittings or threaded, MPT. Yeah, threaded MPT fittings, which get crud into the, into the threads. Um, you know, this is pretty much what you should do uh, for, for home brewing because it's 100% easy to, to seal this up. It never leaks. It's going to last forever. Uh, it's going to be sanitary and it's going to be easy to clean. Yeah, and speaking of the fittings, let's talk about half batch. So these conicals are made to do a half batch. So this CF10, you can do a five, six gallon batch in it as well. Mm -hmm. The ports are low enough that you can access everything that's inside. Uh, the temp coil, which is a sweet accessory that you should definitely get, will be able to reach a half gallon volume. So you yep. can chill it, do you know, crash it. But also, there's a heating pad that will go just on the cone so you can heat your beer and do a diacetyl rest at the end of fermentation or something like that. Yeah, and speaking of the heating pad, that's just one of, one of many accessories that we've got to kind of outfit this, this vessel, and we're going to talk about them next. Uh, let's talk first about uh, kind of a simple one here, but leveling feet. You know, obviously these, a lot of times people put their brewing stuff in basements and garages. It might be like uneven floors, concrete cracks and stuff, and it's really important to have a stable uh, surface for your, you know, your fermentation vessel, especially once you start to fill it up. And so, uh, the bottom of the legs are threaded, and it comes with leveling feet. So obviously, you can kind of set that up so that you got good contact on the ground. Let's talk about the dump port. As you can see here, we have kind of a big, oversized two-inch dump port. Um, so, you know, why did we design around that? You know, when uh, some of the commercial uh, vessels out there have actually smaller ports, a so one and a half inch port. The other nice thing about that is you can put a nice uh, two inch sight glass on it and when it actually comes time to dump your yeast, which you want to harvest a lot of times, uh, you can do that in the sight glass or you can put a two inch uh, quick connect valve 
or a quick connect fitting with a hose and put that into a, into a container. Uh, just makes it a, a very smooth experience to, Definitely. to do. With that two inch sight glass, don't forget you gotta get the leg extension too. So traveling on this adventure, due north, we're gonna talk about this racking port, so. What is racking? Right? Great question, glad you asked. So racking is basically transferring your beer from the fermenter to a keg or bottles. It's that easy, it's just racking it over. Also another cool thing about the sport, you can add a racking arm as an accessory to make that process just a little bit easier. Which so, we'll talk about in a little bit. Good point. So as we continue moving on, let's talk about the most fun port. Mm. The sample port. Yeah, with tasty. the sample valve. Tasty. With a nice couple quick turns, you can take some gravity readings to know when your beer is done fermenting, mm. or... Tasty samples. You can get some tasty samples. You may not have a lot of beer left by the time you're done. Yeah, don't let your friends and family know that you got some good beer in a fermenter, because they will be... Sneaking, sneaking some samples. Sneaking yep. some samples. So next, we're gonna move up to the temperature port. So the temperature port is uh, an analog thermometer that allows you to know the temperature of the beer that's inside your fermenter. Real simple, but it's a very, very important step. Knowing your fermentation temperatures allows you to have good fermentation, good repeatability, and kind of know when you need to crash or warm things up a little bit. Yep. And then in the center, we've got a four inch port. Uh, that four inch port can be used for really one of two different things. Um, one, you could put a clear cap on it. Um, that allows you to kind of get in there and see what's going on visually, kind of like you would with like a clear carboy. Um, or you could put our temperature coil, which has a four inch port on it, and that drops down into it. So if you've got the TC100 kit, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that installs in the middle, and that's what you can use to kind of cold crash and keep temperature low on your you know, fermentation vessel when you're carving and getting ready to transfer. So you can make those nice crispy lagers. Mm. All right, now that we've talked about the tank, let's talk about the numerous accessories that we have to be able to trick this bad boy out. Um, let's start from the bottom. Uh, starting out with uh, our caster kit. Our casters, they roll smoothly, uh, they're black, they look good, they have stainless steel hardware, and this is obviously to be able to kind of be mobile with your vessel. Um, you know, it can be a really nice convenience in a brewery, garage, wherever you have it. Uh, one big thing about this is definitely highly recommend that when you install casters on these, uh, you include it with the uh, extended bracing shelf. As you can see here, it's made out of stainless steel plate, it's very strong. Um, this just really helps stabilize those legs on the tank, uh, especially when you've got casters on it. Um, one of the things about it is it kind of spaces those casters out farther so that you got a better center of gravity, especially once you fill it up with beer, it gets heavy, you want to make sure it's stable. Um, moving along with that, one of the other things that you can do to kind of make this setup more convenient is you can include one of two different leg extension kits. As you can see, we have a short and a long. The short is nine inch, the long is 18 inches. And if you want to put uh, you know, a sight glass for yeast dumping or, you know, any other setup and you just want to bring that up higher off the floor, uh, you don't want to bend down, whatever it is, this is the kit that you're going to use and it threads right in, matches the same legs. Um, you can put the leveling feet or the casters into the bottom of them. Makes it really easy. Yeah. And let's face it, we're not getting any younger, so having yeah. that conical at a little bit higher off the ground, it, it helps. Yep. So let's move on to some of the other features as we kind of move up. Uh, up here on the vessel. This thing has a new neoprene jacket that is, has our beautiful logo right there. You might be a little bit biased though. I, yeah, I am. Probably. Red and black. Yeah, so this is all a big part of our TC100 heating and cooling kit. Uh, what we have here, moving on from the jacket, obviously it's important to insulate whether you're hot or cold. Um, it includes a thermal well. This is the temperature uh, feedback pretty much. Yep, which would go at this port, so you'd remove this analog thermometer and put in your thermal well into that port. Yep, and then that's going to plug into your temperature controller, which we have propped up real nicely here. And as you can see, you can pretty much set your temperature up down uh, to whatever you're looking for, whether it's hot or cold, and this is going to control it to those temperatures. Basically set and forget it. Yeah, so you've got a cooling side and a heating side. So on the cooling side, there's a few parts that come along with that. What you can see here is our coil. This coil we talked about earlier goes right through the top center port of the lid. And you're gonna connect this with these fittings and hose right onto the ends there, and you're gonna connect that into your glycol chiller, which is sold separately. Uh, and that's gonna run the glycol through this coil, and the coil comes in contact with your beer, it keeps it cold to whatever you set it on this controller. 
On the heating side, it's a, kind of a similar thing. You've got a mat heater that Velcros uh, inside the neoprene sleeve here, and that also can, plugs into your controller, and that can gently warm your beer up to whatever you set it to. And so pretty much with these accessories, you can control it to within one degree of whatever you want uh, to be able to kind of hit all your uh, high points for the fermentation cycle. Hit those target times. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about kind of just going through the steps from A to Z. Uh, first thing you want to do is oxygenate your wort as you bring it into the fermenter. So first thing we do is we attach our carb stone. Uh, that has a sintered metal stone that flows the gas through it. And as Ryan's connecting here, you can see it goes onto the racking port. And then this oxygenation kit, which connects to your oxygen tank, is going to flow the oxygen in it. That is for your yeast. We got some pretty cool videos with White Labs, who are yeast experts. Very good. Yep, taught us a lot of stuff we didn't know, uh, but kind of the main gist of that is happy yeast, happy beer, right? That's the gist of it. Yep. Then next thing you gotta do after your fermentation's done, you wanna start to cold crash. You wanna let that sediment settle out. In order to do that safely, you need to have a little bit of pressure in your tank. That's what this is for. This is the all-in-one PRV. Uh, this is gonna allow you to set whatever pressure you want, zero to 15 PSI, and let you safely cold crash as you kind of get ready to yeah. go to the next step, which is carb, right? Yep, and so carbing is a pretty important part. Um, it's gonna allow you to get the nice crisp taste of a carbonation of beer. So for that, all you're gonna do is connect again through your carb stone. Uh, you're gonna add it in your CO2 to whatever volume that you want. And this is gonna help you get up to that 15 PSI, 14 PSI safely. Yep, and then after that, just for transferring your beer out, you gotta have a little bit of pressure in the tank, Just right? Just, so, yeah. So the nice thing about this all-in-one PRV, it's got a, not only a post for the, or a, a hole for the gauge, but we also got a, a gas post in it as well, so you can kind of put your pressure in at the top, kind of help push that beer out. Yeah, and you can definitely check out one of our other videos on the PRV, the oxygenation kit. We got a ton of good resources out there. Yep. Yeah, and definitely when you're looking at a unit tank like this, you can use each of these individually, but then kind of put cohesively together, these accessories really maximize what a unit tank's gonna do for you to be able to go through all those steps to get to, you know, nice kegged beer. Yeah, we're just trying to take the pressure off of you guys. Well, to wrap this video up, we got a couple more accessories that we wanna talk about. So first, we'll talk about the sight glass. Um, it's a great design, uh, looks great. A lot less parts. Than a lot less parts, there, yep. yep. It's a good way to see wort transferring from one vessel to another. You can collect yeast and, and in your conical, and you know what? I think it looks really good. So good that someone got a tattoo of it. Shout out to that guy. That's commitment. Lots. Next we've got this, which is a racking arm. I think it's one of our most popular accessories. Um, it's got an indicator on it, and you can kind of swivel it without leaking. Um, this allows you to kind of swivel this, kind of hit your, your yeast bed and just kind of pop it back up so that you get to that clear beer area and then, you know, you can pretty much rack that beer out through this and it just makes it an easier process. Uh, and then finally, we have our CIP ball. This really helps with cleaning. We all know cleaning sucks, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, that's one of the nice things about a unit tank. You can just pretty much put this in through the top, uh, you run your cleaner through it, uh, it spins and sprays that cleaner all down the walls and makes it far easier and much less time consuming to be able to clean your fermenter and get it ready for the next batch. Yeah, and then you can go do other things while it sits and cleans. Yeah. Set exactly. and forget it. All right, well, we've covered a lot of ground. You've been able to see about our fermenter line, all the accessories that go with it, how it makes your life a hell of a lot easier when you're fermenting your beer. Yep. And I think uh, this is pretty good. <laughs> that was a pretty good video. Yeah. Hopefully you find it infor informative, and if you have any more questions, reach out to our customer service team. They'd be happy to help. And, yeah, see you next time. Peace.